Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm gonna take you along every day as we do a week, a week's sample of the Gather Round curriculum. I'm not gonna go into depth right now into what this curriculum uh, is. I'll definitely show you a bit more into it um, this week as we do it. I have never used this curriculum, but we wanted to just try out a sample week. It's very unit study based. Uh, there's a teacher's guide. I printed up and then I also printed up different levels for each one of my kids. They have their own personal workbook. I've been waiting to do this for most of the school year. I wanted to get right to the end of all of our other curriculum before diving into this for a week, just doing this week sample. So I hope you enjoy following along with us and seeing how this week goes. Right now though, I'm gonna quickly show you just a quick glance into each of the samples that I printed out. I just put the papers that I printed up my, for myself into this binder you guys probably have seen many times. There are, if you go on to gatheroundhomeschool.com, you'll see that there are a few different studies, a few different topics that you can print a sample week of. I chose the Africa one. So this is my teacher's book. I printed this up on the paper that we have on hand, which is 20 pound uh, paper. If I was going to use this curriculum and get into it um, permanently, I would definitely use like a 24 pound, if not 28 pound paper, because you, as you can see, I did double-sided, and so it is a bit see-through. Also, one other thing on that topic, I'm only doing a, a, um, a sample for one week, and so this is how I did it. I put it into the binder. Again, if I was gonna use it for longer term, I think I would, um, do the, what is it called, the coils, the binding, I would do it differently than I did it here. But this is just, again, for the week sample. So as you can see here, this is the teacher's guide. It goes into a lot of detail on what you're gonna be teaching. It goes day by day, so lesson one. For each of my kids, You've probably seen these binders before. This is what they have, just some of their extra like coloring pages and worksheets in. And so I just reuse these binders for their, for their study here. So for my nine-year-old, I did the early elementary level. He'll go into this this week and write his name and we'll get into each of these pages. I am so excited to try this out. As you can see, I'm sitting up in my bedroom here. This was the quiet room of the house, so I wanted to start this video today. Um, I'll go next to my second grader. Now, the way this works is Rebecca Spooner, who wrote out this curriculum, says early elementary level is about ages eight to 10. So I was kind of on the fence. I grabbed the wrong notebook here. I was kind of on the fence for my eight-year-old what to use, but I looked through it and figured out that um, early elementary, I think, is closest to her level. So she's doing the same level there as my nine-year-old. And then for my six-year-old, I got him the early reader. It's very similar to the early elementary that the older kids are doing, just simplified. So that's my six-year-old. He's in first grade. And then for my junior kindergartner, I got her the pre-reader. So again, she'll write her name here in the front. And then there are just some very simple um, very simple things for her to do, but they also go along with the topic of Africa and what I am also teaching to all of the other kids. So come along with us on this week of trying out Gather Round. I will try to not film too much and try to condense it a bit. I can tell just by how long this introduction has taken that it'll be easy to make this video go long, but I'll try not to, so here we go. Happy Monday, we're just about to get started on uh, our first day of Gather Round. So everyone is gonna sit and listen while I start reading and then I'll show you guys afterwards. You'll have some workbooks to do, but first we're just gonna start reading this, okay? So we're learning about Africa. Is Africa a country or a continent? Continent. Okay. <laughs> Africa is a huge continent with so many interesting things to discover. It is the second largest continent in the world. Okay, so we read all of this, all of this, we looked up what, uh, what did we look up? Sorghum, we looked up cassava. No. Oh, are you excited to see all your new pages? Yeah. Uh, we read all of this and all of this, and so now we're getting into the assignment part of this lesson number one. So, first off, we're gonna do our notebooking. Simeon, you're gonna have a flag to color. Uh, let's see, Charity and 
Elijah, I believe. Oh, did you find something to do too? We do still have a toddler. He doesn't have any workbooks, so he just brings us lots of random stuff. Okay, so open up to your very first page and show me what your very first page is. Okay. We pulled our map of Africa out. Zara's down here coloring Africa. Simeon colored um, the African Union flag. What do you have for me? Some garbage? Yeah, African Thank Union you. Union flag. Yeah, and then he's also coloring all the countries of Africa. And Elijah and Charity are over here. They're going off this um, map on the iPad and they are drawing the map. Sorry, drawing the flag. Just want to give you a quick look at how um, Simeon, so this is my early reader's book, uh, is going here. So he did this page today. We all did this read aloud. This is in all the kids' books. So we do that all as a group. He did his Bible verse and spelling word. And then we, oh, and then he did this um, writing page, kind of like grammar too here. Not really writing, it's really grammar. Um, and then again, all the kids have this page on David Livingston in their book. So we went over that David Livingston page. I want to quickly show you Zara's, my pre-reader. She is in junior kindergarten right now. So here's what she did. She colored Africa. She did some U's and colored um the word that started with the U here. And then she did some of this. So here's her sight words. She colored, traced, found all the words, wrote out the words, and then she found all the words here that had the uh sound in it. And that is the end of her, um, her day one. So that concludes our first day. I think all of us gave it a big thumbs up for today. This, I think I said, it's like a unit study based, but it's a gather round, like everybody, like a one, one room schoolhouse type idea. We're all doing the same thing, uh, just kind of different levels. So this does not include math. So when this is over, we still need to do math. I also am gonna get each of my kids to do an independent half hour of reading and I do a read aloud, which I'll do later on today. But um, so far, so good. So we'll see how tomorrow goes. It is Tuesday. We are, as you know, working high, learning all about Africa all this week. Today, we are focusing on Morocco. Lesson number two. Our first stop in our tour of Africa is going to be Morocco. This beautiful African nation is only a short eight miles away from Spain, across the Strait of Gibraltar. Its beautiful coastline stretches along both the Mediterranean and the Atlantic Ocean, providing opportunity for economic advantage both in resources as well as shipping. This amazing country has many features that make it unique in the world. We've got a flag of Morocco getting started here. Elijah, can you show us your uh, flag of Morocco? Red with a green star, and then he marked Morocco here. Good. Zara, what are you coloring? Um, what is that called? I don't know. Do you remember? It's a hedgehog. a hedgehog. It's a North African hedgehog. So she's coloring that, and then over here, we're still working on the letter U, and so she's going to be coloring those. Simeon, can you come over here and show me what you're doing yeah. here? What are you? <laughs> what are you working on? Coloring that. Oh, you're also coloring the Morocco flag. Very good. And then here in my book, I had all my reading to do here about Morocco. And then as you get here, it just shows what is in each of the students' notebooks. So as I look here, I can see, okay, here is what my early reader is doing. Here's what my early elementary student is doing. So today we've got some geography, Am some I language only? arts and Bible. You are, yes, you're an early reader. Um, social studies, science and some art, and then there's tomorrow's lesson. We also did this extension activity. So we learned all about the uh, tagine, which is a dish and a cooking, cooking, uh, what do you call it? A cooking tool, I guess. Um, and so I looked up on YouTube and Charity's gonna tell us about that. Tell us what you learned about tagine. Um, like, the guy on the video, like, she had like an accent so I couldn't really understand everything he said, mm -hmm. but they were like, so he put like lots of onions in it, mm -hmm. and like, 
some vegetables mm -hmm. and meat. What was the meat? Do you remember? No. There are lots of different I ways you can make it, but what did he use, Elijah? Lamb. He used lamb, yeah. But what other thing did he put on top of all that food? He put like dried apricots and almonds and raisins mm -hmm. and to decorate it. And mm hmm like, And he made it look all pretty. And yes. And like, and I was like, okay, I don't think I would like <laughs> that because for one, I don't like dried apricots. And I was like, oh, and all those onions and just like <laughs> the mix with like those fruits and vegetables and. Mm hmm so It's a very healthy dish. And lots of spices. He put lots and lots yeah. of spices into it, didn't didn't he, Simeon? Do you yeah. think you would like it? No, I don't think we've ever tried lamb. Maybe someday we should try lamb. Yeah. Good morning. It's day three of our Africa study. Today we are focusing in on Egypt. So let's go around to these kiddos. Lija, what can you tell me that you know about Egypt? Mm, there's camels. Okay. Simi, what do you know about Egypt? Um, that there are ski mountains. Oh, yeah. So we learned that there are some skiing mountains in Morocco. So we haven't studied Egypt yet. What do you think? What do you think you know about Africa? Um, or, I'm sorry, about Egypt? I know that the Egyptians crossed, crossed the Red Sea and there are pyramids there. Good, very good. So we're gonna learn a bit more. And the Israelites. Mom, yes, we're gonna learn a bit more about Egypt today. Zara, why don't, why don't you come sit? Okay, why don't you come bring your binder over to me? Egypt has various landforms that are a part of its landscape. From the hostile Sahara Desert to the fertile Nile River areas, Egypt is a land of contrasts. The largest hot desert in the world and the disputed longest river are both found in this corner of northeastern Africa. <laughs> I love that big smile. Um, Gustave Flaubert is quoted as saying, Egypt is a great place for contrast. Splendid things gleam in the dust. Interesting fact for the day. Um, an Egyptian average rainfall is one inch a year. Egypt is the first mentioned in, in Genesis 10 as one of the nation's descendant from Ham, Noah's son. Joseph, who had risen in the powerful position of second in command to Pharaoh. My teacher's guide also comes with a list of extra resources you can get if you want to. So there's a whole list of uh, books, there's a list of movies, different resources you can get to go along with what you're learning that month. Of course, this is for a full month, not just for the full week um, that we are doing here. I'll show you the list in a second, but I wanted to say, if I had a library that was open right now, I would definitely be looking for some more of these resources on there. Of course, that is not available to us right now, but once that is available, that would be really good to get some of these extra extra books as well. So here's my list here. It has a whole list of pre-reader books. Now, one of the books that it suggests here is this one, and this is one book that we actually have through this whole list. This is the only book that we actually have on our bookshelf, uh, but this is a Cat in the Hat knows a lot about that book talking all about animals from Africa. So I'm gonna read that to the little ones today. Um, but anyway, they have a bunch of books and then they also have some extra resources here. I was looking on um, Prime and I found, which one is it? I think I, I found this one. So at the end of the week, I think we're gonna watch that as well. But this is a nice list to, to go off of and figure out um, just some extra resources. If you watch many of my homeschool videos, you know that Zara loves her activity. So she is absolutely loving all the activity pages that are in um, this Gather Round book of hers. So what are you doing today, sweetie? Do you wanna tell everybody what you're doing with your shapes? Well, I'm, I'm coloring them and painting them. You're gonna color them and then what? Say it louder. I'm coloring them and then cutting them. Cutting them. So what shapes are they? What shape is this one here? Um, diamond. Yeah. What about this one? Hot. And this one? Circle. And then that one? Diamond. Very good. So she's going to color those and then cut them out. How fun is that? Okay, I'm just going to show you my no. oldest's uh, completed work here. No. So he did the flag, colored in Egypt, and then Morocco as well. Yeah. Wrote something about what we learned today. <laughs> What? Oh. 
Um, we read about Egypt in the Bible, and he wrote a sentence about that. Elijah, you forgot your period here. Oh, sorry. Wes is coming to sit on my lap. Can you write? Can you come write your period right here? <laughs> Those are some dirty feet, Wesley. He was just outside with Daddy. Um, and then he did our Bible verse. We chose to do King James Version for the Bible verse, so he just looked it up, wrote that out. Here is his spelling word for this week. And then he drew a camel. We also talked about the Suez Canal. <laughs> Wesley, man, you're so wiggly on my lap. Um, and then he traced the route from Morocco over to India using the Suez Canal and then not using the Suez Canal. And we talked about that and which, which route is the faster route. So at the back here, we have these travel journal cutouts. So Elijah, you're gonna come down here and you're gonna cut out Egypt. Uh, we'll have a little bit of writing to do here. Where is the back? Oh, here it is. Okay, so we did African Union already, and then we also did Morocco yesterday and drew a picture and talked a little bit about Morocco. So this is kind of like our added journal here. We're just adding it to the end of our binders. Oh, I love that. Did you cut out all of your shapes? Good work. Yes. Wow, you did so well cutting those out. Good morning, friends. Welcome to our last day of Gather Round. So in this Africa unit, I'll show you a quick glance at the table of contents. There are 20 different, is it 20? Yeah, 20 different uh, lessons focusing on Africa. And this sample came with four lessons. So you can either do four weeks of five days or you can do five weeks of four days for each for each topic, for each like unit study. We typically do a four day school week, so this sample coming with four lessons is perfect. Here's the table of contents here. We have, like you saw, intro, Morocco, Egypt, and then today we're doing Sudan. And then you can see here all of the other countries in Africa that would be focused on um, later if you did do a full, like a full month's worth of this study. We were just learning about haboobs, so we took out my phone and watched a video of a haboob. Um, I've never heard this word before. Simeon, what is a haboob? Um, when the, uh, it's a sandstorm. A big sandstorm, yes. And where do those sandstorms normally, where are haboobs the Sudan. most? In the country of the Sudan. Area, Very good. The stuff my they kids, yeah, these kids love they anything they where they're watching stuff. So, and they can watch a little video as an they extra activity. They like that. They um, you are doing words that have v in it. So, these words, vegetables, volcano, and violin, I'll start with v. While I was doing all this read aloud stuff here, some of the kids are doing coloring. Zara started doing her page all about V's and she went a little crazy here with V's. Very nice coloring, sweetie. I wanted to quickly show you guys before ending this video a couple of extras that are at the back of these books as well. So at the back of each of the older kids' books, there are flags that you can cut out and make flashcards. At the back of Zara's book, who is my early reader, she has uh, cut out flashcards for her letters and for her numbers. And then at the back of the older kids' books, there are also cutouts for different animals that they can cut out, and for an extra activity, they can make a diorama. So we haven't done that yet, although the kids have been talking about it, so I think we're gonna get some sand and make a little river and use those animals and make a little diorama. We might get to that this weekend too but there are so many options of what you can do with this curriculum extras you can do or not do depending on how you know how busy your life is maybe or or what your interests or what your kids interests are if you are curious on how gather round works I mean this is a very basic explanation there is so much more information out there but if you are curious about it I hope that this little view into our week of gather round was helpful to you guys let me know down below if you've heard of this curriculum or if you use this curriculum I know some of you who follow my channel do use this or even 
even just if you've done a sample week like we did here and how you guys enjoyed it. I'm curious to hear all that you guys think about this Gather Round curriculum. Thank you so much for coming by and watching today. I hope to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos. Lots of homeschool videos going on here in this channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.